ideal is a town, let's say, that is built with sustainability in mind from the beginning. And so things like you know, everybody who lives in the town is within walking distance of the things that they need. Every home has solar access, for example. The way the town is laid out it needs to pay attention to how are we going to make sure that every home can get that winter sun. My name's Andy LeMann. I'm a, uh, well, my business card says I'm a sustainable building consultant. But I really specialise in passive solar design and energy efficiency of buildings and homes. We're currently at a little house in Mittagong that's become known as the Greeny Flat, a little 57 square metre passive solar house that I built. Mum had been thinking about building a Granny Flat and I was keen to try an experiment to see if we could build a small energy positive is what we're aiming for, um, low maintenance, elderly friendly little, little house. And I'm happy to say that it's, it's worked out terrifically well, very affordable to build and it makes more than twice as much energy as it uses. I grew up here, I was born in Barrow, and I studied architecture at Sydney Uni and went into building and then I moved to America for, for what I thought was a short while and ended up being 20 years. While I was there, I was, uh, I was living in Montana, which is an extremely cold climate in the wintertime. Trying to build energy positive houses in Montana, which was a, a real challenge, but I learned a lot about energy efficiency and passive solar design. Came back to Australia about 12 or 13 years ago and I was pretty shocked to be honest Australian homes had sort of gone backwards in terms of their energy efficiency and sustainability criteria whereas America had actually sort of gone ahead quite a lot. I, I much prefer the term energy positive it's a house that makes more energy than it uses. So passive solar design I sort of break it down to 10 simple things. So number one is, is having a good site. And this site we've got here in Mittagong is absolutely perfect. It's got a nice gentle slope to the north. There's protection on the south and the west sides where we get the cold winds in the winter and the hot winds in summer. The orientation of the building is important. So generally you want to run the building with the long access running east-west so that you maximise the amount of north facing wall that you've got. Then you want to put windows in the right place obviously so you have the large windows facing north. Then you want to have the right amount of roof overhang on the north side. That's really critical because in the summer the sun's high in the sky and having that roof overhang with the high sun stops the sun from coming into the building. Then in the winter, when the sun's low in the sky, it comes right in under the, the eave overhang. Then the next thing is having the rooms in the right place. You want to have the rooms that you use during the daytime on the north side of the house where you've got the windows and the natural light and the warmth and so on. Obviously you want to have good insulation. You know, double glazing is pretty much essential, I think, for the Highlands climate. Good insulation, good air sealing, ACH50. It's the number of air changes per hour. Your average Australian house might be up around 20 to 30. ACH 50. This house was three. The good air sealing then requires that you have a good system for ventilating the house to make sure that it doesn't get condensation build up or indoor air quality issues. Thermal mass is important. So in this case we use the concrete floor as the thermal mass because it stores heat and then stops it from getting too hot during the day and then keeps it warm at night. The last one is just landscaping. In our case, because we had the perfect site, the main thing with the landscaping was just not to plant the wrong thing in the wrong place. This house is all electric and the reason for that is that we can make electricity using a solar panel. We can't make gas. We've got a solar hot water system and a solar power system. So we end up with a, a, a very efficient house and then with a small solar power system, there's only three kilowatts on the garage roof. And, and that makes more than twice as much energy as the house uses. The material choices that, we, that we've used in this house were, were really choices that my mother made. She's the owner of the property. Um, it's, an, it's a rental 
And so she wanted things that were hard wearing, um, low maintenance. She also wanted the building to be able to be completely dismantled at the end of its life and the, so that the materials could be reused somewhere else. Hence the plywood on the walls, for example. Um, gyp rock, of course, you can't take it off and, and reuse it somewhere else. So this whole house can be taken apart with a screwdriver, basically, and the materials could be everything except the concrete slab could be used somewhere else. I'm a huge proponent of light coloured colour bond roofs. To me, dark coloured roofs in Australian climates are insane. Um, it's just too hot here. The other thing is tile roofs and, and brick veneer walls. What you're doing is you're putting the thermal mass, you're wrapping the whole house in thermal mass, which is in the wrong place. It's, it's outside of where the insulation layer is. So all it does is store heat on the outside of the building, especially if it's dark colours. If you're going to have heavy materials like brick, you want to put them on the inside, inside the insulation layer, and then they can help to regulate the temperature. And so I, I advocate for light coloured and light weight materials on the outside of the building. This video series, it's all about sustainability and my part of that is sustainable homes. So for me, the first rule in making a home more sustainable is the modified KISS rule. It's the keep it small and simple. The smaller the home, the less energy it takes to build, the less materials it takes to build, and the easier it's gonna to be to heat and cool through its life. And I'm talking about just the, the simple shape. If you've just got a nice straight gable roof, the building's more affordable to build, it's quicker and easier to build, and you can fit a whole ton of solar panels on there. There's a lot of talk about housing affordability. The discussion's always focused on the cost of building the house. There's never any talk about what it costs to, to live in and run the house, um, and there should be. Well, sure, it, it's definitely more expensive to build this way. Um, you know, double glazed windows cost more than single glazed windows. But when people say to me, oh, well, we, we can't afford to do that, my answer is, well, just build a smaller house. The first thing is don't go out and buy a piece of land and then start thinking, oh, I want to build a passive solar house because you might find that you've got the wrong piece of land. Before you go and buy the land, talk to the designer about the principles of passive solar design. Do your own research. On my website, which is greenyflat.com.au, if you search for passive solar design, it's literally a university course that I used to teach in Montana on passive solar design. Yeah, if anybody has questions and so on, they're welcome to shoot me an email through the website. So yeah, that's, that's passive solar design in a nutshell.